Well, uh, news just coming in. The RBI has announced its policy. Key rates have been left unchanged. The repo rate is at 6.25% and the reverse repo rate has been left unchanged at 5.25%. The CRR is also at 6%. Well, uh, of course, uh, uh, this is something pretty much on expected lines. Uh, RBI, re and in fact, this is the first policy of the year when the RBI has not changed any interest rates for us we've seen about six hikes this year and uh, this this time around of course rbi has left key rates unchanged let me go across to my colleague uh, devina now devina uh, some the key rates have uh, not been changed pretty much on the expected lines over there Absolutely, Shweta. In fact, uh, we've been maintaining that experts have been talking about the same thing, that already liquidity is very tight in the system and inflation, in fact, gave a positive indication uh, at uh, and it's cooling off at about 7.84%, that is the overall inflation. So pretty much in the similar lines that no rates have been touched. But of course, there's a statutory liquidity ratio or the SLR has been changed to 24% from 25%. This is done to uh, take out the excessive primary liquidity in the market. So overall, the liquidity or the money flow in the system uh, is is uh, from the RBI side is supposed to be on a balanced side. That's why they haven't changed any of the key rates, but they have changed SLR to reduce it by 1%. So current SLR would be 24%. Right, uh, Devina. In fact, we have Mr. Dipankar Das Gupta also who's joining us uh, from Kolkata. Mr. Das Gupta, many thanks for joining us. Uh, your first reaction, sir, on uh, the, p the policy highlights that, as we are hearing, the key interest rates have uh, been left unchanged, but SLR has been uh, hiked, uh, has been reduced from 25% to 24%. Yeah, you see, I, uh, uh, as your your correspondent has say, said just now, this was <coughs> more or less around uh, expected lines. However, uh, you know, there is something that we should keep in mind. That you see, there are there are basically two issues here. One is the issue of the the growth of the economy, and the other is the inflation issue. Now, uh, between the two, you know, the the RBI has to do a balancing act. You see, if you, if it if it raises the uh, rates, then inflation would probably be con under control, but that would that could possibly reduce the growth rate. Now, what the situation right now is that that for the last two quarters, our growth rate has been pretty good, and and probably the uh, the the RBI is taking it more or less. Uh, to be an indication that we'll end up with a rate of growth that is reasonably close to 9%, if not 9% itself. Yeah. And given that fact, uh, he, he, he does not want to hurt that growth possibility. However, I would like to keep my eyes open for the next uh, round of uh, uh, policy, which is, which is probably due sometime in January, towards the end of January, I think. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, oil prices have gone up. Oil prices have gone up, and they, and and it's on the cards. Diesel prices are also on the cards. Now, if these things go up, they could probably affect the rate of inflation also. And if that happens, then next time around, I would expect uh, a further rise in the rate of uh, in the in the uh, major rates. Right, uh, Mr. Das Gupta. In fact, I'm just going uh, through the the credit policy document on the RBI's website and. Uh, they are also the the web the document also says that though inflation has moderated and we did see inflation softening to a degree for the month of November inflationary pressures will continue uh, and will persist from both domestic demand and higher global commodity prices so we know that the government is working with a target of bringing down inflation to 6% in March do you think uh, now that the revision of with the revision of fuel prices that we've seen that's that's a very achievable target Yeah, that's, that's what I was saying. You see, w w w uh, I, I am not sure that that's an achievable target unless, as I read in the papers today, that th there has been a pressure on the government uh, that the excise uh, on, on fuel should be reduced. Now, if the government takes that avenue, reducing the excise rate, 
then I think uh, uh, it's possible that inflation rate would, would be lowered. I don't know whether it can come down to 6%, of course, but it could probably be held in check and, and not, uh, not allowed to grow beyond what it is today. So, so it depends. You know, it's not just the RBI that, that matters here. The government's policy decisions as far as excise tax rates, customs duties, and so on, these are concerned. So it is manageable. Uh, in, in reply to your question, you know, I, I don't think that it is impossible to get down to 6%, but it will depend on how the finance ministry also reacts to these uh, new, new demands about, uh, you know, or, or, uh, regarding indirect taxes. Right. What's your assessment of the overall liquidity that we see in the system at the moment? Because even the RBI has, has voiced some concern on that front. Uh, they're saying that... Uh, that while the overall liquidity in the system has remained in deficit consistent with the policy stance, the extent of the tightness has been beyond the comfort level of uh, the Reserve Bank of India. See, the overall liquidity has been on the decline. That's true because, you know, one was, you know, the, the large amount of money that was uh, taken out of the system uh, 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 on account of the 3G uh, license, uh, you know, payments, okay? And, and uh, uh, along with that, uh, you see, this month itself, we understand that on account of advanced tax payments, there has been a large drain on liquidity in the market. So these things put together, uh, it, it appears, has reduced the liquidity to the tune of one lakh crore which is a very large reduction in liquidity. And that could itself put a pressure, upward pressure on the market rate of interest. So, so that is my, my, my take on, on the current liquidity situation. And if this continues, then, uh, then we could probably see some, uh, uh, some uh, you know, loosening, some, uh, uh, some loosening uh, of, the, uh, the, of the major rates on the part of the RBI later on. However, as I said earlier, see, uh, the oil price thing should also be taken into account. So right. on the balance, it's somewhat difficult to say right now. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, we are also joined by uh, Mr. Naveen Raheja, Managing, Managing Director, Raheja Developers. Mr. Raheja, many thanks for joining us. Uh, your first reactions uh, on uh, the RBI not increasing interest rates uh, for the first time this year. This is an extremely welcome step and uh, in fact, you know, at this stage when uh, the market was actually reviving and uh, uh, the banks had recently increased the interest rates, uh, most of the banks by about 0.5 uh, basis points on the basic uh, rate, you know. So that, that has already, ca already caused uh, a concern to the prospective buyers in the real estate to a small extent. And if they have, would have increased further, you know, uh, real estate is a driver for the economy. And uh, if that uh, gets affected, you know, again, we uh, overall economic growth uh, will get affected. And uh, the 0.5% rate of interest, which has been increased, it, that is also likely to fuel uh, long term uh, inflation in the, you know, in the system. Right, uh, Mr. Raja. In fact, uh, let's quickly uh, go across to my colleague uh, Devina now, who's standing by with a quick, quick check on the markets. Devina, uh, so is it all cheer on the Dalal Street? Well, Shweta, certainly this uh, the Lal Street gave a thumbs up initially when the policy came in. In fact, I'm looking at the screen right now. Sensex is over 19,600. It's going up. There's a green indication over there. Nifty is about 5,800. And uh, it's on a down slide. But as we saw yesterday, there was about 150 points uh, down on Sensex because they were expecting credit policy to come out. And there were an another volatile session that was seen in the market yesterday. But right now, as we see, it's giving a thumbs up. In fact, uh, let's go down and see how the indices are performing. Bank index is uh, certainly up by 153 points. You also have uh, capital goods, which is a little bit down, but auto is uh, down by 130 points. Consumer durables is down by 45 points. And IT, which we again saw surging yesterday, is up by 145 points. So essentially, market has given it a thumbs up because you do have uh, the 
green zone in the market which has been right. lacking for a long time right now and in fact investors were expecting uh, uh, were not expecting a rate hike right now but with the SLR being decreased by about 1% not so much of uh, uh, no, not so much of pressure in the banking system the liquidity situation which has been tight for a long time will now looks to be balanced and of course as you rightly pointed out inflation is still a concern for the RBI but at least as far as the markets are concerned it's a, a, a positive news for the market right in fact now let's go back to Mr. Raheja. Mr. Raheja, now uh, now that we are getting into the new year and uh, there is some relief coming in uh, from the RBI, interest rates have not gone up, uh, at least for now. Uh, how easy would it be for uh, the Aam Admi, the common man, to really buy a house in the new year? Because we did see prices going back up in 2010 and again they are beyond the reach of the common man that we do see we have seen asset bubbles building in the real estate sector so how how do we see 2011 uh, panning out uh, where realty is concerned uh, I, I don't agree with the asset bulb building in the real estate sector because already you know in our country uh, urbanization is only to the extent of 30 percent which is likely to cross 50 percent in the next 20 years the Indian economy is growing, demand is growing, and everybody needs a house, everybody needs a workplace. So I don't look at it, you know, Indian economy, you'll look at the, in the coming years, the real estate is actually going to increase uh, in, 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 in a much higher rate than what it has been happening since last 10 years. And we must expect that. Right. So even at this stage, even at this stage, whatever increase, uh, you know, B, uh, the RBI has actually given a very good news and uh, we look forward that in the coming few months, you know, the demand will be tremendous and the reality sector will really look forward. You know. Right, Mr. Raheja, but do we see a price correction, uh, uh, you know, going forward in, in the reality space? I don't think so. Demand is actually coming from genuine buyers. We have been launching projects and we have seen that the projects which we used to sell uh, taking a time of one month for 500 apartments, we are able to uh, wrap it up in 10 to 15 days uh, uh, nowadays, you know. So the demand is actually there whenever we are coming with any stock, you know, it is going very fast. So right. I look at it in the coming time, uh, real estate sector is still looking up and still there right. will be more demand. Let me go across to Mr. Das Gupta here. Mr. Das Gupta, on this point, uh, on uh, you know, on the real estate sector, now that's a sector that gets really impacted whenever interest rates go up or go down, for that matter. Now, what's been your assessment? Uh, we did see prices go up in two, 2010. Uh, do you think we will see a phase of price correction? Though Mr. Raheda here is saying that there is no need for price correction. There's enough demand coming in. But what's your assessment? Uh, uh, are you talking about the real estate sector alone or general, in general? All right. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Das Gupta, for joining us. Mr. Raheja, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Devina, thank you so much. Uh, with that, uh, we're going to slip into a short break, but news and updates continue on the other side. Stay with us. Uh, more top stories coming up right after the short break. Stay with us.